Hello out there YouTubers and welcome to P.E. Slick Podcast. I'm your host Matt here. Each week I'm going to bring you something different in terms of leadership, ministering, entertainment, book authoring, and much more. But before we begin each time, I'm going to be airing a classic throwback commercial from back in the 80s or 90s or 2000s for my personal liking. Stay tuned. Can one shampoo and conditioner give more body? When women with fine hair compare Germac Nutribody to the regular brand, they prefer to buy more than two to one for body and fullness. Germac Nutribody for salon results at home. And we're back, fans. This is your host, Ranger Matt, host of P.E. Slick Podcast. Joining me this week is uh, one of my closest friends. Uh, we used to work together, and she is especially known as a model and she's worked with me on some of my projects that I've put together and I'm glad to have her on my podcast. This is Miss Janice Gillian. Gillian. Hi everybody. Um, it's such a pleasure to be here. So yeah, how are you doing today, Matt? It's great to speak with you again. I'm I'm doing well, you know, I'm glad I'm I'm always happy whenever I have a friend come on this show and they talk about their work and just, you know, how they got started with it. And, you know, I want to reach out to all my friends who are having success who may not be interviewed or haven't been in a while. And I'm glad to have you come on board. Thank you. I appreciate you for having me. And I definitely think that you should, you know, continue to build your friends. And it's great that you also give your friends a platform to speak about their art and also share it with other people and, you know, your viewers, your viewers as well. So I definitely I really appreciate that. Absolutely. <laughs> For those who don't know, where are you from? I am born and raised in Baltimore, Maryland. That's right. We bought them more, bought them more babies, you know, Ravens Nation. <laughs> exactly. Go Ravens. Um, definitely one of, one of my favorite teams. I'm not too big in the football, but... I'll definitely always back my reasons because I can more. There you go. <laughs> um, so growing up, what what were your hobbies when you was growing up? Um, when I was growing up, I well, hmm, I would say like my hobbies were definitely like growing up, um, definitely playing sports. Like I played basketball throughout middle school and a little bit in high school. And then I um, also did soccer, I would say, probably like towards my end, kind of my high school career. Um, outside of that, I really like to draw, like, you know, be creative. Um, I always like to go out anywhere with my family, just like to an amusement park or um, to the movies or anything. Um, another hobby, I would say, would be probably just like, uh, um, I'm trying to think how to explain it. But um, I would definitely, I know, well, going back to drawing a lot, I would definitely draw a lot because when I was younger, I was going to be a tattoo artist, but then I got older and I was like, my drawing definitely sucks. This is not for me. So I just was like, this is the career path that I'm going to take, even though I love tattoos. Um, and so, yeah, that was basically any other hobbies I'm trying to think of. I know I had some, right. but it's just like blanking right now. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I understand. Hey, you, 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 you got a couple of hobbies down here, so it's like you know you, you got your thing, your thing going on, and then then you got into your biggest moment, which was modeling. Um, how how did you get into that? Um, well, I started modeling when I was around uh, fifteen, sixteen. Uh, I think one of my mom's friends had said there was an opening for a show, and the show was just a small show, but it was the proceeds towards the show were going to give it back towards the Baltimore community and um, the educational system, which I really liked at the time to go to my mom. So I tried out for it. You know, um, the lady was like, yeah, you have a great blog, stuff like that. So, and when I did it, like, I felt very confident in myself. Um, right. but I definitely feel like when I first started, I didn't have a lot of confidence. And, of course, that's, that's, like, normal because, you know, during your teenage years, you're going through a lot of hormonal changes. So um, it definitely helped me gain confidence. And I really realized that I didn't see 
with a lot of women who look like me in the, the modeling industry. Like, of course, yes, I've seen black women, but not short black women. So that was definitely an inspiration for me to continue to work harder in my career so that, you know, other girls who are growing up can see, oh, well, this model looks like me instead of, like, how I grew up where I may not, well, how I grew up, I didn't see short girls really on a runway or really in too many print um, photo shoots. So that was definitely something that inspired me to keep going. Okay. Yeah, you, I really admired a lot of your work as a model. Um, was there ever a moment when doing this where you've gotten out there and you felt nervous? Yeah, definitely. A lot of times. Um, uh, I'm usually with runway. I would say doing photo shoots, I'm not as nervous, considering that's more of like a personal experience where it's just you and a photographer or you and probably like three other people. Right. But um, definitely on a runway, I've gotten nervous. I've actually slipped on a runway, which oh. is funny, but you just, you literally just have to get up and keep it going. Like sitting there and really like, being upset about it in that moment, like, the show must go on. That's how fashion is, especially in fashion shows, the show must go on. Right. So, really, you just got to talk it up. And it's like, if you slip, you slip. That's how I think it. It was a mistake. You learn from it, and you get better. Who or what is your biggest uh, inspiration in terms of where you at today with this? Uh, biggest inspiration would certainly be Rihanna. And the reason I say Rihanna, even though she's not necessarily a model first, is because she's so multifaceted. People thought she would just be successful in the singing world and just expand her singing talent to the farthest they could go. But she went outside of that and proved that she could be so much more, that she could own a, fat, a lingerie business, that she could own a successful makeup line, that she could be a humanitarian, and those are all things that I would like to be because I enjoy doing makeup, so I definitely want to put out a quality makeup line that everybody can enjoy, and I also would like to give back to not just my own community, but to many other communities around the world. So she's definitely a person that I'm consistently inspired by. Right. Yeah, you, you ever thought about reaching out to her? Um, I have not thought of it yet. I mean, I would love to reach out to her. I just don't know necessarily how to go about it. So right. that would be something else to figure out. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you know, that that's somebody who you have, uh, you know, big inspiration. And, you know, normally people do do that. They normally link up with that person. So, I, you know, I, I think that would be a good combination, you know, you all link up at some point. Yeah, um, I would definitely love to link with her and take some pointers from her. Because I've also learned that surrounding yourself with people who have the same like-mindedness as you and who are working towards really good goals like you, that's definitely important because that support system can also push you. And then if I, let's say, really actually met up with her, I would definitely love to take her advice on how to follow through with starting my own, not even just makeup lines, but fashion lines as well. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, um, I, I definitely, I mean, I'm not sure, like, how long you're going to keep modeling going, but if you do pursue this for majority of your life, um, I can see you starting your own fa uh, fashion or modeling studio. Yeah, I definitely want to start my own fashion line, which I'm actually working on the side right now. Right. Um, so that's something that I'm definitely taking my time with. Um, I want to make sure I put out quality and something that's going to last. Um, but, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I lost my chance off for a second. <laughs> Do you have a favorite moment or time when you was modeling? Mm, I really enjoyed almost every modeling experience I've had. I would say my most enjoyable one was doing... Um, the cash on show, the cash on show, I hope you say that right, but she's actually another influencer in Baltimore who started her own clothing line, which is called Girls from Venus, and um, absolutely quality clothes. I love everything about it. I had done a, um, a show for her, her first show back in, I think it was 
forgive me if I get the year wrong, but 2018 or 2017. And that was so much fun, um, the creativity behind it and also the message behind it right. um, was very important and moving. And I think she did an amazing job on her first fashion show. And it was very fun to walk for her just because, like, she she was very blunt. So she was just like, look, like, you know, I want y'all to be yourselves. I want y'all to give it y'all best. You guys are amazing. You guys are models. Like, you can do this. And her words of encouragement really spoke to me, especially coming from one young black woman to another young black woman. So I definitely, that was probably, like, one of the best. Definitely, well, I'm going to say not even probably one of the best ones I had modeling. So kudos to her. She's amazing. Um, there is also another girl you can interview about her business, but I can give you her information later. <laughs> Sure, sure. We'll um wrap on that once we um conclude this this process. Yeah, I, I would love to interview her about her about her work as well. Like I said, I'm always on this podcast. You know, I mean, people people they'll see it and they'll say, you know, he, he got people that was on TV, animators, the producers that were at Disney. I said book authors. Um, I just re-interviewed a friend of mine who I've known since third grade, and he um he's he's now a book author, a motivational speaker. He's been on. Fox News, he, he, he's he's still going, and you yeah, know, it. yeah, it's it's still this podcast is is going, you know, it's still growing. I'm looking into other mediums in terms of um getting it more out there because it's only YouTube and Facebook. Um, my mother suggested iHeartRadio because they do podcasting on there as well, and I'm trying to look into that as well. Um, my last question for you is um, what advice? Can you give somebody who wants to go into modeling? Um, definitely to, and I think every model has said this, to have tough skin because no matter where you go, you're going to get people who will have anything to say about what you do, whether it's positive and almost certainly there's something negative to be said. But you definitely have to remember that you are you. You are unique in who you are. Um there is something out there for everybody. So don't think just because you miss one opportunity that that, that means you're going to miss the next three or four. Um, I'm religious, personally. I'm a Christian. So opportunities that we may miss or we may be rejected from, God definitely has something bigger in store for us. So that's something that I definitely try to um, tell people. And then just to persevere, like, you're going to get knocked down a lot as a model because people may not see you in their vision that they created in their head. And in a sense, like, it's not being discriminatory. It's just people, when they have their own vision, that's how they envision it. And that's just okay. But just remember that there's so many more opportunities out here. And I feel like the model world is honestly expanding. Like, it's not just skinny white women anymore like it used to be. Like, we got plus-size dark skin women. We got plus-size albino women. We got disabled women, and not even just women, like even men. We have disabled men, um, albino men, dark skin men, and I think that's amazing. So just keep pushing through and make your own breakthrough. You know, you're your own person, and can't nobody change that. Don't let people change that. There you go, folks. You heard it right from Janice's mouth. Don't let nothing change what you want to do. And, you know, the, the one the – one, Topic that I've bring up in um, the Georgia interviews I've done is motivation, and the advice you've given just now is really good motivation to for people who want to get into modeling. Um, you know, it's the same uh, America Next Top Model is now in the air, so I think you you would have been a good contestant on there. Thank you. I'm, I'm honestly sad that that show did unfortunately get canceled, but hey. It, there's still other ways, especially with social media being so big these days. There's other ways. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, Denise, I want to thank you for taking the time to talk about your modeling. And is there a way for you have, like, a website of where anybody can see your work? Um, actually, I do have an Instagram. It is Legal G. Um, it's all lowercase. It's spelled L E G A L G double E. So that is where you can find me at. And that's where I post, um, even all of my modeling stuff. My Facebook, I don't really get on too often. So unfortunately, you can't really find me on there. But, um, most of my work and definitely how you can contact me also the best is through Instagram. Okay. 
And I, I definitely think too, you know, when 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 this virus ends, you know, maybe, maybe well, even even if you were to do it on on a lot of these computer or through phone, you know, maybe at at some point, um, maybe you should uh maybe give like a a speech of uh or like a video of how you got into modeling and advice to give to other people because I, I feel like you're 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 one of those people who could give advice to somebody and they could see the video and they could lead to somebody else doing the same thing you're doing. No, oh, thank you. That's actually a really great idea, and I would definitely keep that in mind. Um, I definitely have to – I think that would be really great, so I'm going to definitely keep that in mind. Absolutely. <laughs> Denise, thank you for being part of my podcast. Um, it was great talking with you. I'm glad you took the time to be a part of this. And, um, hey, I hope you and your family are doing okay through this trying time, and um, thank you for, for doing this. <laughs> Yeah, um, thank you for having me yet again. Um, I definitely hope you know, your family and my prayers that they're doing uh, well during this time and that they're all healthy. So, yeah, definitely, again, thank you for having me. Um, please be safe, of course, during this time. And, of course, practice social distancing, you know, like they say. Absolutely. <laughs> all, right, all right, folks, we're going to have a commercial break and be back after this. Dad, is there any way you could send the money? Today. To send someone money fast, come to Western Union. We'll make sure it gets to any of our 15,000 locations, usually within minutes. Keep in touch. Western Union, the fastest way to send money. Well, YouTubers, it's been a lot of fun. Thank you for tuning in this week for P.E. Slick Podcast. I'm your host, Ranger Matt, signing off. Until next time, you have a good night now. See ya. <laughs>